Hi, I'm Josh Cronin, owner of the Three-Legged Dog Public House in Independence, Oregon. About two years ago, I did a cocktail class, and I had folks come in, and we spent about six weeks going through uh, different concepts for cocktails, methods, techniques, all the different boozes, all the fun stuff like that. Uh, we met once a week on a Sunday night, and it was a lot of fun. Um, unfortunately, I don't have the time to do that right now, and I figured I could reach a broader audience by doing some little videos and kind of introducing you guys to some basics of cocktail making, cocktail techniques, and kind of run through the whole thing. Rather than do an hour long video, I decided maybe I'll keep these in about oh, two, three, four minute bites because I know if it doesn't have a cute kitten or a baby or somebody getting kicked in the crotch, it's probably not gonna hold your attention for much longer than that. So uh, there'll be a series of these coming out uh, over time. Hopefully I can keep them pretty regular and uh, don't uh, get distracted along the way, but I'll try to keep, uh, keep on it so that you guys can uh, Kind of learn as you go. So today I just wanted to kind of introduce you guys to the bar and to some of the tools that we're going to use as we go ahead making cocktails. I want to make this approachable to everyone. I don't want just to, to focus on the professional bar side because you guys are going to be, be making cocktails at home and uh, that's kind of a little bit of a different ball game than making them at a bar where I've got a lot of fancy tools. So I'll show you what I use and I'll also talk about some so the first thing uh, is making sure you have a good liquor cabinet. We're pretty lucky here. We've got a lot of things on the shelf, but uh, you know, for your home, think about what you like to drink, what your friends like to drink. It depends on whether you're making drinks for yourself or entertaining. Uh, if you want to have a big party and you want to make sure that you're covering your bases, you know, a couple of basic whiskeys, a gin, a vodka, uh, tequila maybe if it's going to be that kind of party, uh, rum. It's great for summertime drinks. So lots of different options. Uh, just think about kind of drinks you want to make and the guests you're going to be able to be dealing with. Also good to have some citrus on hand that's used a lot in many, many cocktails. Lemons, limes, grapefruits, uh, you can get more exotic. Uh, there's no need to right off the bat. But, uh, when it comes to materials and, and, and tools, a couple of basics. You get your basic cocktail shaker. Um, I like these. All I do is use this with a standard shaker glass or pint glass. Uh, you don't want to use the thin fancy uh, pint glasses like we actually use for our beers. This isn't going to work so well in a shaker. It'll fit, but it's thinner. It's more likely to break. You're going to have issues. So this and this right here makes for a great um, means for shaking up some cocktails. Uh, basics, and I'll show you guys this again as we go forward. Put your ice, put your booze in here. Give it a little tap so it seals. Shake vigorously. Uh, until everything's nice and chilled. I usually like to feel my fingers kind of almost start sticking to the metal side of the tan. I know it's good and cold at that point. Um, always shake with the glass behind you and not that way. It's bad to have a glass come loose or maybe break and it have to be pointed at customers or be pointed at your friends. Uh, so shake until it's good and cold. Give a little bump on the side of the tin. This will come apart and you're ready to go. That takes you to the next point of strainers. <clears throat> There's a lot of uh, options when it comes to strainers. Uh, this style of shaker, it's called a cobbler shaker. It's got a couple other names. Um, pretty cool. It's got a built-in strainer here. So, and some of them even, uh, this is like a set amount, like an ounce or whatever, so you can use it for measuring. Uh, I don't like to have that many things all in one space, but uh, these do work. Shake up the cocktail, pop off the top, strain it out through that strainer. These are fine for making a few drinks at home. It's not really my preferred shaker. Like I said, I like to use these. And then I just use this style of uh, cocktail strainer. So these work really well. A um, little spring there. Pop it over the top of the shaker. You can pour if you're really fancy. Slide this little bit down here. And you can actually get a split pour for pouring two drinks at once. Uh, that usually goes wrong at least the first few times, so uh, you have to be careful of that. Also, if you're doing anything with um, herbs in it, uh, fresh mint, something like that, this will get mint in it, so make sure that you keep these things clean. You don't want little bits of dried herbs in your strainers. Uh, there's also a julep strainer. It's more of a big slotted spoon that fits in here. Um, I find those a little bit harder to use. They're a little bit more showy. A lot of bars like those. Um, I tend to uh, go the practical route rather than the showy route. We don't do any flair bartending here. We don't do anything too crazy. Um, that stuff's cool. I like it. I like going places that do it. 
I'm not knocking it, but uh, it's just not my style. The other thing you can do that a lot of bars will do is to split the glass and then use the two glasses together to strain. Again, I'm clumsy. I don't like dealing with it. I've seen people that do a great job of it. It's super fast. Uh, I end up dropping half the ice into the drink or something like that. So I just keep it simple. Strain here. Really easy. Uh, the other thing that you're, you're going to need, one of the other things, is a way to measure your booze. If you want consistent cocktails, it's always important to measure your booze. Um, once you get a little more advanced, you can learn how to pour kind of by eye. But at the beginning, if you want good, consistent cocktails, please, please measure. Uh, I love this. This is a Japanese kind of combo jigger. Uh, the Japanese style means that you've got um, that, this long tapered look and it's also marked on the inside. You won't be able to see it from there, but it's got a couple little lines. So this side measures half an ounce, three quarters of an ounce, and one ounce all the way to the top. This one does an ounce and a half and two ounces all the way to the top. It gives me all the measurements I need right in one jigger so I know I can grab it, pick it up, measure, flip it if I need to, measure, and it's all right there. I don't have to figure out whether you've got some of these other styles and you know, you've got one ounce, three quarters of an ounce, two ounces, an ounce and a half. Like, which one do I have? I'm not sure. I still keep them around. Some people like them, but uh, I really prefer this style of jigger. They're, they're really easy to use, really handy. Um, so you're able to measure, measure your booze that way. Not all cocktails are shaken, so we do have to stir some cocktails. And we'll talk about stirring technique in a few minutes, but uh, I like this, um, the stirring mixing glass, as they call it. There are different levels of fanciness on these. You can get Swarovski crystal or something like that. You can spend 150 bucks on one of these. Um, at home, I just often use the biggest glass I have and I'll stir it right in the glass and then and strain it from there. You don't have to go with the fancy stuff, but if you like to, it's easy enough to make that happen. Um, this stuff can all be found online, really easy. Uh, but these are these are pretty fun, pretty nice. This one's getting a little scratched up from use, but uh, they hold up pretty well. And you also need a cocktail spoon. These are used for a lot of different things. You can use it for a quick stir on a built drink. We'll talk about what built, built drinks are in another episode of this. Um, they're also great for getting a cherry or an olive out of a jar, whatever you need to do there, giving things a little extra mix. Um, also crucial for making a, a stirred cocktail. So what you're going to do basically is get your, get your ice in here, get your liquid in, and we'll talk about this again as we go forward. Get your spoon in here and there's a stirring technique where you basically pull and push the spoon, spinning this clump of ice kind of as a whole unit and letting the drink kind of uh, move between those ice cubes. It's a good way to chill a drink down really quickly without diluting it too much and without really frothing it up. So certain drinks like uh, gin martinis, uh, classic martini, uh, perfect for this kind of technique. Some of your whiskey drinks that are stirred rather than shaken that you want a nice clear, cool drink without a ton of dilution. Stirring a drink is a great way to do it. And uh, it, this practice, this technique takes a little practice. I hold the spoon between these two fingers, and basically just pull and push, pull and push. And uh, at home, I don't have a cocktail spoon, I should got a bunch here at home. I actually use a chopstick more often than not. It works almost as well and uh, you know so you can practice at home with a, a big gulp, gulp cup and a chopstick if that's what you want to do. It's all about getting the practice in. Um, so yeah that's a great way to stir uh, a stirred cocktail. So the other thing I like to keep on hand is a little fine mesh strainer. Certain cocktails that we like to put some herbs in or um, other, other things that may have little bits of things or little bits of ice, sometimes it's nice to pour through here. Honestly, certain cocktails, I like the little bits of mint in there, um, or Richmond Gimlet, which we'll talk about in another episode, but uh, some of them you do want to strain those out so you have a really nice, um, clear, consistent cocktail without little bits of fruit or ice in it. So a little strainer is handy to have, um, and a good knife. Uh, have a, a good, smallish knife for cutting citrus. We also keep a cutting board back here um, behind the bar so that we can cut and a juicer that while we're while we're talking about cutting fruit and all that kind of thing uh, juice is really important to cocktails and a juicer is pretty pretty crucial now at home you don't need one of these guys they're great here they extract a lot of juice really quickly 
They're not that expensive, but you're still talking a couple hundred bucks for a decent manual juicer. Um, but you can also use the little clamshell juicers. You cut it in half, the ones you squeeze by hand do pretty well. They're the ones that you kind of press down and twist. I wouldn't invest a huge amount of money in an automatic juicer. It seems like kind of a, a waste and they're tough to clean and uh, they can break. So I'd go with something manual. You can also just squeeze by hand if you're only making a few cocktails, but uh, if you're gonna be making very many, you want to invest in some sort of juicer. Uh, it can be can be as simple as, like I said, the clamshell or the old-fashioned twist. I think that gets us through the uh, bits and pieces of it. The next episode, we'll talk a little bit about more, more about liquor and a little bit more about some of the techniques actually involved in using these. Um, that's all I have for you right now. So uh, I'll be back in a day or two, maybe, and uh, with another episode of this, and we can move forward in our cocktail class. And uh, if you get the chance, stop by the Three-Legged Dog in Independence, Oregon for a craft cocktail. We also have really great food and craft beers. So come see me if you get the chance. Thanks.